understand it for Sunday, but how hard is it to get ready for a team without your starting quarterback in the past? And you gotta, still got to go to work. You better say nothing change. Wait till you get out there. Always practice, always try to do my job. <laughs> There, how would you describe the approach this week as you get ready for another AFC matchup? My approach this week? The, the team's approach. The approach is the same. Go out and try to win the game, work hard throughout the week, make each other better, and um, go execute on Sunday. I don't think that's changed as far as our approach. Try to win the game. Got to come to work and do our job and go out and execute on Sunday to, to get in the W column. Derek, how do, you, how do you think the addition of Deontay Johnson, Deontay Johnson helps guys' offense that's already kind of been clicking to this point. I mean, we don't know yet. He hasn't been out there, but I'm uh, excited to you know, have him part of this squad. He's a great player. Ron Rouse great. Uh, played against him. He was in Pittsburgh. You know, I always thought he was a great player. So, he's a great addition. You know, he got put together on the field. So, we'll see once he gets in there and uh, it's opportunity. You've seen Denver's front seven and prepping for them. I mean, Sean Payton's D's have always been known for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not, not much space on film. They try to... Uh, Clog it up and uh, well, wall it off. I think they do a great job. Have a uh, great uh, penetrating um, front and uh, you know, great depth as well. So they're, they're a great group, so it's going to be tough. Uh, Sunday. How important are those early downs? You know, so you get in third and manager situations, but how, how important is it to have success in those early downs? Um, I mean, you know, that creates momentum within the offense uh, to get us into a drive and get that first first down and hopefully lead to more explosive plays and then get to the red zone and get points. But um, yeah, if you want to um, you know, make uh, big plays on early downs so you're not getting 30 longs and let defense be able to just unravel on you. But yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely important. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Quarterback out there to get ready. Um, you know, I think for us right now, it's, uh, you know, we've had a great week of practice. You guys are flying around, running incredible routes. You know, I've been doing a thing. So it's, it's everything that we do. And we're I'm fortunate to have a guy like Josh and um, to be in there and practicing. But uh, uh, we're confident in every way that we have. How much of the offense can you still run? Or how much of the offense can you run if it was Josh versus Lamar? We got everything. We got everything. And, and that's the beautiful thing is, is we're out here working and, and getting better. And um, there's no fall off. But uh, we're blessed by two incredible quarterbacks. Obviously, um, Lamar is one of one. But, um, you know, Josh was doing his thing in there, too. And Mark, you've been here a long time. What is the key in bouncing back you know, from a tough game and, and getting back on track? Um, I think that we've done a good job this year of you know, kind of looking at ourselves in the mirror and, and figuring out you know, uh, we need to execute better, we need to do some things better, and um, just dial it down. And, and um, you know, I think that we will. Um, and this is a good opportunity this week against a really good team. And I know the guys are excited about that. So, um, so just fly around and have fun. Sure, we have more national tight end days. It seemed to work out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, a lot of tight ends making some big time plays. <laughs> um, you know, but uh, again, I'm just I'm, for the most part, I'm just proud of our guys. You know, our guys in, in, in on the tight end room and um, have been fighting all year long, and um, it's been a really fun group. It's kind of funny. You think of that position for a long time was not getting a lot of love. That even have that uh, kind of in, in, in your tight end, you that you guys have had the, the growth of the position and, the, and getting attention for it. it well, it's been huge, and I, I think that, that the love is, is deserved. You know, there's been so many great tight ends throughout the throughout the years that paved the way. Um, you know, for us to be where we are right now, and um, it's such a personal and integral part of an offense that if you got a great tight end or great tight ends, um, it makes a big difference. So it's been awesome. Thanks, Zach, um, you know, the, that last Cleveland possession, um, obviously the, the big pass by James, but, but mm -hmm. through pressures, sending a lot of guys, mm -hmm. um, was, was the pressure up to that point, um, you know, adequate? And, and did you feel like you had to send more guys to compensate? Um, yeah, I think in that situation, um, they're right there. They ended up getting, uh, doing a good job of getting right down that line of uh, the edge of field goal range. So we're trying to knock them out, uh, knock them out of field goal range, and then, um, you know, make it as far as field goal as possible. And then, worst case scenario, um, at least if they are going to score, they score fast to give our offense a chance to, um, you know, go down there and, and, and give them a chance to score and, and win the game. So that was kind of the thinking that was going in behind how we called the game, how aggressive we were at, at that point in time. Pass rush and the and coverage obviously go hand in hand. Yeah. You know, what, what's your view of the pass rush and, and how 
how you kind of balance calling blitzes and, and getting after the quarterback and just the view of the pass rush overall? Yeah, I think you just, you just said it perfectly. Like rushing, rushing coverage works perfectly. It has to work perfectly together for it to work. I mean, you can have great coverage, but now the quarterback holds on to the ball and just the nature of, uh, of the National Football League. The quarterback has a lot of time, no matter how good your coverage is, um, he's going to be able to find and guys are going to be able to get open. And on the flip side, a lot, um, if your coverage gets there, you have to be able to, I mean, if your rush gets there, your coverage has to be able to, um, you know, sustain at least early on so the rush has a chance. So uh, we've had good examples, great examples of the rushing coverage working together. And when it works together, I mean, it's beautiful. When not, right now, um, it's not clicking as much as we need it to be. So uh, we got different ways that we're trying to look at and find ways where we can generate, you know, pressure, obviously with, with blitzes, but just with the four man rush and just marrying the coverage and the rush together. So we're on the same page. And I think that will help uh, lead for more big plays for us and eliminate big plays for the offense. Zach, we saw it on the uh, <clears throat> Tillman slant touchdown, and it's not the first time. Why is it happening that the other team is snapping the ball and the Ravens defense isn't ready? Yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we want to make sure that we get lined up. I got to make sure I get the call in fast enough for those guys. So it's a combination of those things. But um, I think that uh, we got a good resolution to, to those problems, getting the call in fast, keeping things simple, and then going out there executing. But um, obviously, it's, it's costing us um, at critical points of the game. So I got to do a better job, and we got to do a better job of, of executing and with the communication. And um, I think that we got a great plan going forward to make sure that we uh, take care of that because you definitely don't want – you want to be able to be lined up to give yourself a chance. If you're not lined up, I mean, that's – you know, you're giving the offense um, an easy way off the hook. If you – if your guys – hold on to some interceptions. The entire story about the defense is probably very different. Uh, how frustrating is that? And has it affected then the way you make calls, knowing the guys are, have not made some of those plays? Um, yeah, it's frustrating. Obviously, you know, we expect to make those plays. I mean, it's National Football League. We look at interceptions um, when they throw right in our hands like a free throw in basketball. You got to make those. So um, uh, we look at it. Our guys are working hard at it. And it doesn't change the way that um, I'm calling it or we're looking at it as a defensive staff or coaches because our guys are in position uh, to make plays. Our job as coaches is to help those guys, put them in the best possible position as possible. So we always striving for that. And guys, um, they've been in position a lot of times, and I'm confident that they're going to come down with those plays. So uh, we just keep coaching it. Uh, Keep, keep coaching, tracking the ball, catching the ball, work extra on catching and tracking the ball. And then um, when those opportunities come, we got to capitalize on them. So um, nobody's more frustrated uh, than the guys who've had those opportunities. So, um, you know, we appreciate the attention to detail that they've, they've taken to make sure that we come up with those opportunities uh, next time they present themselves. Is that coming up with those opportunities, do you think that's sort of a mental issue, a confidence issue? I mean, is that more sort of kind of putting pressure on yourself when you see the ball coming toward you? I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't think, I think the, the crazy enough is it could be a mental issue or confident issue, but with our guys, I don't, I don't see it as a, as a confident mental issue because they're a very confident group. Um, they're still mentally strong. Um, you know, they're catching, they're catching some interceptions in practice, which is, which is good. Now he's got to take it over to the game. So just, they, I, I, you know, I expect them to keep on attacking the football. And I know for a fact, I'm confident that we're we going to start coming away with those. So it's, it's going to be good for us. Zach, if it, like a, fan came up to you in the grocery store or something, mm -hmm. maybe it's somebody who's not locked into all the details mm -hmm. of the team, and they just said to you, why is this thing not working as well now as it was at this time last year? What, what would be your, your answer? That's good. That's a good question. Um, my answer my answer would be like, you know, everything doesn't, you know, even though you put in the work, everything doesn't come together as fast as you may want it to. All you can do is continue to grind, continue to chase perfection, and um, continue to work at it, and that's what we're doing. And we know that the work that we're putting in, we know that attention to detail that we're doing is going to pay off. And, um, you know, obviously it sounds like a broken record. been saying that for a couple of weeks, but um, I, I honestly truly believe that with the coaches and the players that we have, it's going to come together. And it's going to come together at the right time, and it's going to be big for us uh, down this last half of the season. Yeah, Zach, big, big picture, when, when things aren't going as well as you want them to be, mm -hmm. how much do you say to yourself, well, we have to change some of what we're doing to get different mm -hmm. results versus – Hey, I believe in what we've built here. We need to be patient for it to come together. Yeah, you look, you look at all of it. I think you'll be crazy if you look at some things and um, be like, you don't have to change some stuff up. Um, so we've been looking at that hard, look and see what our guys can go out there and absolutely execute to the highest level and feel confident um, in, and we, we're going to do that. And um, also you look at some of the things that you may not have executed uh, like you wanted to, but you're looking at the, the rules, the fundamentals, and the principles of everything is sound, and we've got examples of doing that well. So you just continue to try to coach that up. So it's a good balance you have to you have to find. But uh, here we're we're always about what can our players do 
um, they can, and what can they execute at a high level and go out there and play confident and fast. So we're always looking at that. And me, me personally, I'm a, I don't care what, what we run, what coverage you run. If we got to blitz a whole bunch, if we don't have to blitz at all, whatever these guys can go do, whatever's going to help us play at a high level of defense, that's, that's what we're going to do. Zach, how concerned are you about the health status of your interior, of your defensive line right now, mm-hmm. and how does that impact the way you may call the game? Yeah, man, I mean, um, obviously we got some guys that are banged up. Uh, you know, we'll see if they, if they um, you know, make it to the game Sunday. Obviously, uh, those guys are very important players for us. But, I mean, the guys we got behind them, I'm excited about. They've been getting some good work in practice. So, um, uh, here in Baltimore, the interior D-line is something we take serious, and we always have a con- contingency plan uh, for that. And I don't think that's going to really change, um, you know, the way, the way we call it. You know, if we have to adapt in-game, we will. But I don't think that's going to change the way. We got big guys uh, from the starters, from the depth pieces, big, strong, physical guys who know how to play. Uh, square and, and get after it. Zach, exactly. when, when you have a guy like Marcus Williams who used to playing every snap every week, um, doesn't play at all, do you do you feel a need to explain the reasoning by that, not just to him, but to mm-hmm. the entire secondary or the entire defense so they sort of understand mm-hmm. the big picture of what's going on? Yeah, I mean, we've had those we had those conversations um, together with, with uh, Marcus, obviously, and then uh, with the defense um, on a personal level. So, um, um, you know, we kept those in-house. We had those conversations and uh, one thing I say about Marcus is the way he the way he handled uh, what went down is is great, man, and he's just a great teammate. He's been a, a, a pro since he's been here. He handled uh, last week like a pro, so I'm excited to see um, how we move and how he moves going forward. So, like I said, like I got up here and said last week, I got all the confidence in Marcus Williams. So, like I said, he had a great uh, day of practice today, great day of practice yesterday, and um, you know I think that uh, the best is to come for him. Zach, the simulated pressures that were really effective a lot last year and pretty good bills this year really well mm-hmm. didn't don't seem to be as effective currently do you going back and look do you think or is there a tipping at all going on of letting them know what as you study it kind of why do you think it's not been as effective yeah. i think it's just a you know combination of things of the the oh we're getting there but the coverage is just a tick off or we're making a, mi- a misstep so i think it's been effective for us it's been good for us um but uh, at, at, at certain times it hasn't been and then like like I've been saying the offense has been capitalizing on those um, you know those mistakes we've been making so um, you know I think I think the pressures the simulated pressures uh, specifically are good I mean I think you see guys in the backfield guys causing havoc at a high rate but now we just got to continue to put together the rush and the, and the coverage together. Zach, do you feel that the scheme of the plays that you're calling is successful because plays have been there to be made have been made and they've been you know, well within reach uh, of making them and it's just execution and, and building off of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's that, um, you know, every week come up with a game plan. You've been confident in the game plan, feel like the game plan's um, been good and the players are the, are the ones who give us confidence in the game plan. So, um, you know, have, have, they, have, have we come up short? Um, on some plays, yes. Have, can I do a better job? Yes. You ask the players if they can do a better job. Yes. So it's we all in this together. So um, you know, obviously, it could, I could not, I could be I could call you know quote unquote would be a bad play, but we go out there and get a sack, fumble, or interception. Now you know, so everybody else looks like a good play. So um, you know, the, the the players make it happen. Um, you know, and um, like I said, I think we're gonna be we're gonna be fine, man. Like the confidence isn't wavering on our side, on their side. Um, you know the play call is the play call. Uh, we think like every we think every play call is a, is a good play call. It's on the sheet, you know, for a reason. You know, going into the week, so um, we'll come down with those opportunities like we're talking about. We just got to execute at a better at a better level, and us as coaches got to make sure that we do a better job of just making sure everybody understands exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Zach, I know a lot goes. Please. I know a lot goes into game day and active decisions, but mm-hmm. David Ajabo was inactive for the first time mm-hmm. uh, this past Sunday. What are you seeing from him, and what do you want to see from him moving forward to mm-hmm. to maybe become more of a factor for mm-hmm. a pass pass rush that you guys want to improve? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff goes into the game day actives and stuff, and just uh, Ajabo, he's been doing a good job for us. He's been physical. He's been been a hammer in there. Nothing. Him being active had nothing to do with his with his uh, with, with his play. So. I'm um, excited for him. He's been out here working, grinding, and like I said, you know, the, you know, it's a lot that goes into active. It could be something that's not going on even with your position or your side of the ball. So, um, you know, that, that that is what it is. And uh, but the job was doing a great job for us. With, with Namdi, I know he's seen a lot of attention, a lot of double yeah. teams. You know, it can be frustrating when the production isn't what it was the previous yeah. year. How, how are you kind of coaching him and guiding him through that? What are you seeing from Namdi? Yeah, I, 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 mean, I see the I see the same play. I mean, obviously teams are starting to pay a little bit more attention to him. 
Um, so we're trying to find different ways to move him around, keep the offense off uh, off balance, single him up. But um, he, he's not discouraged. I told him, keep playing how you're playing, keep studying how you're studying, and the, the numbers are going to come. So, um, you know, it's just like uh, somebody who's going on a, a streak or whatever, like, shooting like a great a great three-point shooter okay you know you're a great shooter right you're shooting you're shooting you might not be getting all those opportunities to, to make shots but you know when it when it when it all hits you know you go on the street so i think uh we'll see that from uh beaks here soon man he, he's been playing great football for us um he's going to continue to play great football for us and the numbers are going to come uh soon thank you Zach. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, can you talk about the uh the difficulty of going through the practice week uh when you don't have your starting quarterback out there for the couple, first couple days it is what it is, you know. Josh can use the work. You know, that's what you do. You get prepared for it. And like any other position, you go to work and, you know, guys have to still function around him. But the, what the calls are, the calls are up front and our skilled guys, and we got to have, you know, high level of execution, no matter, no matter who's at what position. Todd, obviously, you guys are able to bring in Deontay Johnson. You've done a lot of things well across the board offensively. What do you think he can maybe add, an element he can add to your offense that you'd like to see get better, uh, even with what you've already accomplished? Well, I think, um, first of all, just seeing him the first couple of days, I like what I see. I think he adds tremendous depth to us at receiver. I think he gives us another guy that can separate. I think that's really what you, you know, um, I think our tight ends can separate. I think our receivers can separate. I think we've got other guys that, you know, can win. And, uh, I just think it, it allows us to, you know, again, you're just always trying to add talent. And I think we've added a talented player. Not to say, you know, he had a 115 yards last game. He's kind of had a couple of really good games this season. Where have you seen his growth from last year into this year? Well, I think a couple of weeks ago, I kind of mentioned, I just think there's um, a lot of things that go into that. I think uh, a First year for a rookie, everything's different. Where you live's different, food's different, coaching's different, system's different. Um, the stage you're on is different. For a lot of players, some not as much, but for others it is. Having to deal with everything that comes with being a professional player, social media, how do you handle that part of it? How do you handle the length of a season? I mean, holy cow, how long are seasons? I think it's just the comfort of already going through it like always. When you go through something, I think it's easier second time around. From your vantage point, what was kind of the reason in the game Sunday why the offense may not have looked the way that they have coming into that game? Well, they're good. I mean, let's start with that. I mean, they're good on defense. I mean, that's that's a fact. Um, and um, and you have to give them some credit. Okay, that part of it. Uh, with that being said, um, you know, eight times we got inside the fifty, we got in their territory, we scored four. That's really in a nutshell. I mean, between lost yardage plays, uh, missed fourth down opportunity, uh, some penalties, uh, that's what you're going to end up with. Um, we didn't play as clean as we've been playing. Um, and that showed. And that got us to where, okay, you know, um, 24 wasn't good enough. You know, it just wasn't. And uh, we're certainly capable of better. Um, and our guys know it. Uh, we got behind the sticks a little more than we had. We, we bailed ourselves out the week before. We had a number of get back on tracks we got out of with the penalties. Now, we didn't do that as well this week. And that stung us. You know, we had some other opportunities that we just didn't, you know, take advantage of. Uh, we we're close, and we made a, a number of really good plays. But uh, And there's some calls you wish you had back. I'm part of that, too. So it's all of us, right? That's part of it. Todd, obviously, uh, Derrick Henry's had a ton of success on the direct snap kind of stuff over his career. How hard is it for you to make the decision to take the ball out of the Mars hands, given how good he is? Oh, when it doesn't work, for sure. I mean, that's, uh, you know, like any play, when it doesn't work, it's disappointing. It just happens when it's fourth down. Um, whether you're in your own end and you decide to go for it, or you're in midfield and you decide to go for it, or when you have a chance to get points and you don't get it, um, you look at a number of things. How do we scheme it? You know, the thought that went into it. How we blocked it, um, like any any given play. It's just those plays are the ones that you know that really sting, as we know. Right? It's a third down. All right, fine. We get another shot at it. Hey, we kick the field goal. It's fourth down. That's it. We got to be on. We got to be on point with uh, how we design it, and uh, to give ourselves the best chance because we had a chance right there to 
you know, but even before that play, I mean, we get back-to-back -back penalties. I mean, that, that's what did it. We would have been on the two-and-a-half-yard line, so the penalties backed us up, then we get to that, and then I make that call, and, uh, you know, it stops all the momentum, score on the first drive. That's happened two of the last three weeks. We've moved it down there, and we've turned it over, either on downs or a turnover like we did against Commanders. It's unacceptable. Coach, with the team trading for Deontay Johnson um, and Keith Mitchell now trending towards a return, how much of a bonus is that to an offense that's already been you know, performing at a really high level? Well, I mean, again, having really talented players is, and having a really talented staff and a game plan that they understand allows you to really function at a high level. But it starts with having really talented players, so it's exciting to get those guys back. Um, and it also provides depth if you lose somebody. I mean, that's really, you're, it's the nature of what we do. You're going to lose players. So uh, having quality depth, guys that can come in and, and function at a really high level, when your expectations are really high. If your expectations aren't really high, then uh, yeah, that's different. We're the Baltimore Ravens, so we're expected to win. So whoever that is, we've got to have enough depth to do that. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Uh, are you expecting Keaton back this week? Uh, that's not up to me. With the addition of Deontay, does, do you feel like it allows you guys to do anything differently or in terms of looks, formations, or even – uh, some of the things you guys do within all. We'll see as he gets acclimated. You know, um, first week's always tough. You know, getting him involved, and um, you know, but I'm excited what I've seen the first two days. You know, and we'll see where it goes. You know, some of that's game plan, how we want to attack somebody, how many receivers we want in the game, uh, where we go from here. Um, same with the tight ends you know, in terms of where all the backs we have on the field. Talk about. Uh, talk about uh, just the kind of pressure that Denver can put on linebacks with their blitz packages and also just the talent of cornerbacks and the that they have. Yeah, they're playing at a really high level, very confident. I'm very confident. Um, their guys are really active. I mean, they play hard. I mean, that's one thing you see on, on film. You know, they've done a great job of building the core um, personalities of the players they've got playing on the field. I think that's impressive how hard they play and schematically how they challenge you um, with their pressure package. So we're up for it. Um, you know, our guys are excited. We've seen that for the last four weeks. We've seen teams that have decided to pressure us. That's, to me, where the league is going. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be seeing it as much. Um, so uh, we've got to be on point with all of our IDs and where we go with the ball. Todd, when, when you look at the kind of the philosophy behind those short yardage calls, is, it, is part of it that Lamar just can't draw quite as much attention in those situations as he as he normally does. I mean, is that is that why maybe it's not as much of a factor to have the ball in his hands or not in his hands? Um, I don't know. We love it to be in his hands, <laughs> and uh, we love for it to be in Derek's hands. Right. And um, unfortunately, it didn't work. You know, early in the year on the goal line, we did it and we scored. And you know, it was a different situation. It wasn't on fourth down. You know, this one happened to be on fourth down, so it stings a lot more. Um, that doesn't mean we're not going to do it again, but we're going to do whatever we think is necessary to convert and score points. Just yeah. didn't didn't work out that time. One more. Yeah, we got to we got to do it better. You know, that's just the way it is. With every every call, that's it's on me. Now the offense obviously has played really well for the most part this year, been efficient and so forth. Um, just curious, you're talking about being clean and those sorts of things, and kind of like the Cleveland. Um, what was the conversation with Lamar in terms of that stuff post? Oh, you know, it's, um, I think every week that we look at the tape, it's not really Lamar per se, as it is with everybody. It's pretty easy to look at the tape and, you know, look and say, hey, where can we get better here? Starting with me, staff, um, getting in front of the mistakes, which is what coaching is. It's getting in front of it before it shows up on game day. That's what we're paid to do, um, and letting our players shine, and then they got to do their part. How do we how do we do it better in practice? How do we get it to where, you know, um, the gifts? We haven't been turning it over from a gift standpoint, but from a discipline of route running, assignment, communication, penalties, that really put you behind uh, the eight ball in terms of consistency, and because um, we're plenty capable. We have plenty of uh, 
of good players. So that's really the biggest part, starting with me, our staff, players, eliminating the things that uh, that stops you from, from being as efficient as you want to be. I mean, that's a lot of talk, but the reality is, is it's pretty obvious on tape uh, when we do things the right way, okay, starting with me and everybody else, we're, we're pretty difficult to handle. Uh, but we just got to continue down that road um, to get eliminate the things that, that stop you from, you know, scoring as many points you need to win. Chris, um, you know, John on Monday was talking to us about, um, and it just felt like, especially it seems like in the return game, um, not a lot of great returns this week and, and maybe some, you know, judgment things. I know you didn't have your top returner, but how do you guys kind of take that internally and, and what's it like trying to fix that this week? It's one of those things I, I believe we take, we take it as a challenge uh, because every time we go out there, we want, it, we want to be perfect. And um, every situation is different. Uh, every kickoff, every kickoff team we face is going to be a, a little bit different. Some teams will probably present a little bit more challenges uh, than we than what we've seen the week before. But for us, it's an opportunity for us to go in there after the game, watch the tape, uh, get it fixed, and then come back out next week and say, if we get our opportunities, let's make the most of them. Um, other than that, you know, outside of the uh, outside of the penalties, things like that, those are things that I think, uh, from a technique standpoint, when we're out here. Just, just putting ourselves in the right spot, making the blocks. We could eliminate all those things. So these are, these are in my, in my eyes, these are easy fixes uh, for us to fix these things, and so we can get ourselves going. But we haven't been perfect, right? And so those are the things that we're chasing every week. John, <clears throat> John also had said Chris Collier kind of lost sight of where he was. Maybe ended up bringing two punts out or kickoffs out of the end zone, which is not the preference. How do you teach that field awareness? One of, one of the ways for Chris, well, let me, let me just say this. I think the kid's, I think the kid's done, a, done a great job for us. Um, situations where he get, when he finds himself in situations where, you know, he's straddling, the, he's straddling the goal line, whether he brings it in or he brings it out. Well, if the ball's clearly in, we can help him. Uh, we have ways in which we can help him with our off returner. It's just like putting his hands out, hey, let's, let's keep this one in. Um, if he doesn't know, you know, and, and he's straddling that, that line, then he's got to make a decision. Of whether you know he takes a knee, where's his body position? Should he run? Should he not run? If it's clearly an end zone, you want to keep those in the end zone. But sometimes, being a young guy, you know, uh, you find yourself in situations. So what do we do? We come out here, we drill it, we work it, we put him in those situations so we can help him moving forward. Um, John talked about the possibility of Deontay Johnson factoring into the return game. I guess maybe there's been some reps. Uh, is it possible for this Sunday or future Sundays? I don't really know, uh, you know, uh, how that situation is going to work out. But what I do know is uh, we got Deontay back there. Uh, we're going to get him. We're going to get him worked in. We're going to see how he catches the ball. It's been a while for him, right? He hasn't caught a ball since 2020, uh, I believe. So we get him out there. We get him worked in, and then however it shakes out is kind of how it's going to shake out. But uh, as of as of right now, you know, we're going we're going to roll with Tylen, uh, put him back there, and then as we as we continue to move forward, and because uh, Deontay does offer something a little bit different, he has a lot of his skill with the ball in his hands. I mean, it's tremendous. We all know what he can do. So f for us, it's just let's get him caught up to speed because it is a little bit different if you haven't done it in a, in a long time. Chris, is, is Keith the guy that you might look at at some point? Yeah, I mean Keaton's Keaton's special, right? Uh, he's a he's a special player. We all we all seen what he did uh, last year. Um, whenever he got the ball in his hands, for us, it's it's uh, whatever player we have available that we feel is best for us and we can put back there. We're gonna give him an opportunity and we're gonna let him roll. Chris, was, was there anything off with Justin physically on the kick that he missed? I mean, it looked like he had maybe slipped a little bit on the previous one, and then he obviously didn't hit that ball the way that he wanted to. You know, I, I, I really I really don't know uh, that much. I don't think anything was, was off with him. Um, I mean, I think that's more that's more if, if he felt something that was off or, or whatnot. But, uh, you know, for us, man, we just, like, again, with, with Justin, it's, it's, it's his mindset, him going out there. He, all he wants to do is, man, he wants to make kicks. So uh, when it doesn't go right, I, I know he does a deep dive, uh, analyzing the things that maybe he could have done, he could have done differently. And we just kind of leave that to, we, we just leave that up to him, and we talk to him, and we get it coached up, and we, we're ready for our next opportunity. Chris, do you feel that your unit has adequately performed that midway point of the season? Not at all, not at all. I mean, I mean, when you talk about our standard, uh, there's no way if, uh, if if anyone's out there watching that tape, you can't say we've we've played our a complete game, all six phases. Now we've done a lot of good things. Uh, last last week we covered more kicks than we've covered 
in the game. And I thought our kickoff team played pretty darn good, right? So I, I think as we continue to go on and we continue to develop our young guys, we're going to get to do a lot more. And, I, and, and we believe that as long as we come out here and we work hard and we continue to get better, we'll start to see what we do in practice come to life on game day because that's really where it counts and that's the most important. Is there any frustration that new issues are cropping up, issues that you've had there's never any frustration with me uh, because I these players man they're they're high profile players uh, when they go out there I know for a fact that they want to do things right and they're trying to do things right and sometimes things don't go to plan uh, the, there's a defense on the other side and, and I'm, I'm mainly talking about from this game because it seems like that's where this is going I'm talking about the about the penalties because we did we did hit a big return there, right? We got the ball out past the 40, and then we had a penalty that brought us back, and that really came to a technique issue. Those are things we can get rid of. Those are things that that we know we can get rid of. So we just got to take care of that. But as far as being frustrated, not at all. I mean, I mean, we're chasing greatness. We're trying to chase greatness, and that's not easy, right? But we got to continue to just come out here every day, line up, and let's get better. Let's get better so we can put our Put the standard on tape on Sundays. All right, thank you, Coach.